Hey everybody, welcome to Drive Through View 568. Today we're going to take a look at Raise Your Goblets. This is a new game from Cool Mini or Not. It is sort of a social deduction game, which has some really cool components. You got these big plastic goblets that you're going to be poisoning and trying to poison certain folks around the table and also make sure that when you go to drink a goblet at the end of a round, it doesn't have more poison than antidotes. Uh, there's also some different variants and ways to play based on the number of players. Uh, it does play 2 to 12 players, although the rules are going to change up relatively significantly uh, based on those different player counts. So let's take a look at how the game is going to work and then I will tell you what I think of it. So here you can see all of the different components that you're going to get in the game. Now first I'm going to kind of explain sort of the base rules basically for 4 to 6 players, although I have played the normal rules, which I'll explain now, with three players, and it works fine, but there is a special sort of variant when you're playing with two or three players, and then if you have seven up to 12 players, there's sort of a weird team variant. Now, I have not played it uh, with seven or more players, although I have played it at three, four, five uh, players. And as I said, I've played the three player, uh, you know, two different ways. So. First thing to notice here are the goblets, and these are nice, very thick, good plastic uh, goblets there with this cool kind of engraved or embossed emblem there. And you have these little uh, discs here, which you see in a lot of cool mini or not games, and you go ahead and attach these. Now some variants that you can play, uh, apart from player count or however you really want to do it, you can take these off so uh, they're not there. But these do help a little bit with some of the memory element in terms of remembering what is in these actual goblets. Uh, to start the game, you'll usually take the goblet here with your color ring on it, and then let's say you were the purple player with the shield here, and this gives you sort of a cheat sheet of the different actions that you can do and how to score at the end of the round. So typically the purple player will start with the purple goblet in front of them, but the goblets are going to be moving around in the center of the table. Now what you're trying to do is a couple of things. One is not to be poisoned. Well, poisoned are these little black beads here, and then the antidotes are the little white beads here. And then you've also got here a bunch of these red beads, and these are just straight up wine. And there's some special colored ones as well for different uh, special abilities and things. So to start the round off, you're always gonna take two poison and one antidote, and then to fill out the number of cups that are gonna be out, which is gonna be based on players, you're gonna take one extra wine. So in this case, we've, let's say we've got all six cups out, We'll take three extra wine, so now we're going to have one random and unknown bead in each of these. So I'm just going to drop these in without looking at it. I may have dropped two in that one. No, I didn't. So you put those in there like that. And now you're not allowed to look in these. So you're going to kind of put these towards the center of the table. And you know you would probably have it more in a circle like this based on how players are sitting. And then from that point, players are going to take turns uh, sort of seeding these goblets. But before we get ahead of ourselves, uh, one thing that you're going to do when you're playing the basic rules is you're going to shuffle these up and this is going to give you a target. So let's say I am the purple player here and I randomly get dealt this black card. So I'm trying to poison the player with the black shield in front of them. And you're going to deal these out and these are going to be face up so everybody knows who you're trying to poison. Uh, and if you do get dealt your own, then you pass it to the left and then swap it around. Just basically make sure that Nobody has their own, of course. So you're gonna have a target for each of the rounds, and the game takes place over three rounds, depending on the rules, but in the basic game, you play over three rounds. And then you're going to shuffle up and deal out these different character cards. And there's a whole mess of these, and these are just different special abilities that are gonna allow you to break the rules. Uh, so let's just look at this one randomly. Uh, at the beginning of each course, take one poison and one antidote token from the common pool and immediately pour them into two different goblets. So you kind of have a little bit more information about where a poison and an antidote might be. That's your special ability. Uh, we've got another one here example. So this one is, before drinking, you may call a vote to rotate once. And so uh, one of the actions you can do is just to kind of rotate all the goblets around. So you're just going to move them all around the table so they're in front of each different player. So at some point, players are going to drink, and then this particular ability will allow you to do one kind of final rotate if the vote succeeds. Uh, this one here breaks the rule of peeking into a goblet. You can peek into any goblet, not just your own. Now, peeking into the goblet is an action that you have to do. You can't just look in a goblet anytime you want. So what's going to happen? Players are going to be dealt one of these uh, roll cards, and then each player is going to get three wine tokens. You get three wine tokens. You're going to get two poison tokens. 
and then you're also going to get two antidote tokens and these are going to go behind your screen so players won't know what you've got so you're going to do that and so then on your turn you're typically going to get two actions you can see you've got these normal five actions here and you can do like a rotate and then a pour or you can do two pours or two rotates or whatever and then if you want to call a toast that's going to trigger sort of the end of the round and then players will get to do an action and then you get to drink but when you do this you have to have gotten rid of all three of your wine tokens and it's got to be the first and only action that you do on your turn but let's get to what these other actions are so the first thing you can do is you can rotate and again you just take and you rotate all the cups around uh, left or right and the next thing you can do is you can swap two cups so I could take this one and this one and swap these it doesn't have to be in front of me or whatever you can swap anything you want the next thing you can do is you can pour and so you're going to take one of these these are behind your screen and you're going to say uh, you know what? I'll take a poison and then I'm going to take it I'm going to take this cup and I'm going to put it in without looking at the cup and drop it in there nobody will see what I do and so that goes in there so that's an action that you can take uh, the last thing you can do here is you can peek at the cup that's in front of you so you take a look and you peek in there and say what's the light's kind of bad so that's black so we're going to peek at that and remember if you have the special ability here you can peek at somebody else's not just your own and the last thing you can do is you can pass and so on your turn you might if you wanted to just pass twice or you can peek at something and then pass so you don't want to give away too much information you're kind of playing wily a little bit now when it comes time to call a toast you must have gotten rid of all of your wine and then you say okay we're going to drink we're going to call a toast so starting with the player to your left everybody's going to get one single action uh, like there's a, a character in here that breaks the ability they actually get two single actions and then when it gets back to you you do one action and then everybody's going to drink and we'll just kind of randomly put these in here and you, you're going to drink and just pour out on the table uh, what's in, in your cup and so if you have more poison than antidotes so we had a third poison in there then you would be dead if you have equal to or more antidotes to poison then you survive and you get one victory point for surviving if your target dies let's say we do like that and your target were to drink something like that they would be dead and then you would get another victory point for that remember your target is dealt out at the beginning if you survive and your target dies you get a third little bonus point for that so you can get three points out of that the final way that you can get a point is if you have the most uh, wine so if you have the most wine uh, tokens in there then you can get a fourth point so the most you can score in a round would be four points and then you're going to shuffle up you're going to deal out uh, all the tokens back to the players and then kind of re-randomize these uh, you keep your character card although there's a variant that if you do die you have to draw a new character card and then you play three rounds of that and then whoever has the most points is the winner now like i said there is a variant for seven to twelve players i'm not going to discuss that because i haven't played it i have read it but from my sort of take of it, it that's something you wouldn't want to necessarily play the first time you play this there's a little bit of wonkiness to the rules you kind of have teams or pseudo teams and i think if you were to sit down and kind of play it cold with like eight players that might be a little bit rough so i would say if the game does interest you i would play this a couple times with you know four five six players even three players and then uh, you know sort of move up into that but i will explain the the two to three player variant now i have played the rules i just explained three player and it actually kind of works okay uh, there are certain roll cards that don't make sense in the three player variant but some do um, and uh, the rules the normal sort of variant for three two or three players is you don't play with these you don't play with the target cards and you don't play with the uh, colored ring so all of these are taken off and you don't really have a cup in front of you and you always play with all six cups normally you have you know one cup per player and so you'll set these out sort of in a uniform formation it tells you to set them out in a big long line but if the table is sort of tiny or something then you can just set them like you know like this with two rows of three and instead of two actions everybody gets just one action on their turn uh, basically it's the same rules there's no rotate in this case because it's just sort of one in a spot but though you, you can swap these around uh, like so and you do the toast in the normal way but when it comes back to you uh, to as the toast caller actually the player to your left uh, gets to drink any of the goblets that are out there so they've got to you know maybe say oh we'll drink this one and in that case they would be dead <laughs> but 
So if you call the toast in that uh, player game, then you know you are letting other people pick first, but you still get to do that last final action since you were the one that called the toast. So you basically drink until uh, there's only one person alive. Because you know, let's say everybody drank these three cups, and then uh, you know there was only three cups left. So go back around, and the, if there are uh, multiple people left alive, it'll be whoever has the total. Uh, wine from all of the cups that they drank left that would break that tie and then you just get one point for being the sole survivor and you play in that case uh, to a total of three points so it could go, go more than three rounds especially you know if each player wins two points that'd be six and then a seventh round for the final one so the three player one can go a little bit actually kind of long that'd be my only kind of knock against that uh, but it is interesting to play in that way and it, I think it's better to play as the variant uh, but you can it's still fun to play it kind of the normal rules like that okay so that is raise your goblets this one was a little bit of a slow burn uh, for me I didn't really quite enjoy it the first couple times I played it um, I didn't hate it so because I kept playing it and then after a bit you kind of get sort of the metagame idea of it down you start to play around with uh, you know okay there's a few ways you can kind of approach it you can try to put in all of your red tokens your wine tokens and get them out and really have control over when you call that toast or you can maybe put out all of your poison tokens and you can really poison down and then it becomes a sort of strange mind game with like you know sometimes everybody's like dumping tokens into one of the goblets and it's like nobody wants to drink that one but maybe you've been putting antidotes and stuff in and so you feel pretty confident about you know that one but everybody's like oh there's so much in there nobody knows what it is um, you know or do i take a turn to peek but peeking is weird because you, you'll like peek and then somebody will put a token in the one you just peeked at and you're like okay well now it's probably poison because <laughs> it was you know barely safe before so peeking is okay and peeking is good in terms of like the last thing that you might do is you know in terms of the toast but if you peek early in the cone going around the table again you're still susceptible to you know just somebody changing it or swapping uh the the goblet out from underneath you uh, the production quality is obviously really cool i like the idea of the goblets there's a nice insert in here where everything kind of snaps in so it all fits in very nicely uh, i like the um the beads, the glass beads is a nice thing. Uh, there's a little bit of, you know, you can kind of tell how many tokens are in there based on when somebody picks it up and it shakes and they put something in you're like, well, that one sounds like it has four or five tokens in it. But I kind of think that's part of the game. Uh, you know, we're discussing with some players, they're like, I don't know, I wish there was some other kind of token. I'm like, no, I like kind of having this sort of like listen, that's just a little bit more information that you can try to gauge. Uh, even though that's not really thematic, you wouldn't really hear the poison in the wine gob. But for gameplay, I think that's kind of a nice, uh, aspect to it uh, so it's a very fun game I, I don't know about playing the 7 to 12 player game like again I haven't played it so I can't really say but it's got some wonky rules to it but I think like I said during the walkthrough I think that would be more fun uh, once everybody has kind of played it and has a good sense of the game uh, just just from reading the rules you can you can kind of tell how some of the metagame stuff is going to work because it's like different players controlling different parts of the turn uh, if they're on the kind of the same team uh, but I definitely would recommend it uh, for three you know three to six for sure because uh, you've got that variant for three players two players I mean I guess that would be okay but I can think of like a billion other two player games I'd rather play than this uh, for two players but for three it's fun and like I said you can even play it the normal quote unquote way with three players uh, but it, it's it's one of those kind of like it's like a giggly game where as like a more of the social deduction style you got you know a werewolf and I don't know dead of winter and stuff like that that are a little bit more I don't know how to say it I mean the werewolf is obviously much louder of a game because that's you're constantly yelling and lying and all that kind of stuff and this one is is interesting because it starts off very very slow and this might be like why it didn't really grab me early on uh because you're just like oh yeah okay whatever i put some tokens in and then i peek at that okay oh you just moved it haha -ha. and you know but then after a while like you start to get into it uh, because like you know two of you like you know that one is like death it's like pure death and then you both know that and you know you're trying hard not to laugh to give it away but other people don't know why you're laughing because you can start laughing because it's like full of white you know so it's it's got that language and loudness and lying but it, you don't really speak <laughs> 
you know, very much. You just kind of giggle the whole time. So if you like, if that sounds fun, uh, then uh, definitely take a look at it. And it's a filler too, so it takes about a half an hour to play. Um, so this is definitely one where you're like, oh, I don't know what to play, and they're like, well, let's just play this. And it's a half an hour, and it's fun. So that is uh, Raise Your Goblets. Uh, definitely take a look at it. Thanks.